when it comes to this kind of stuff and when it comes to Kanye being cancelled for what he said and he, you know obviously what he said was abhorrent you shouldn't be saying those kind of things about any community I'm okay with that sort of action if when it's warranted but the only thing that I don't I'm not okay with is the unfairness of it all and I think it's something that I've kind of maybe internalized because of my own struggles you know growing up in a very conservative family where essentially everything that was happening in that household was unfair you know certain things could be said to you but you couldn't say certain things back you weren't allowed to answer back you weren't allowed to have an opinion or it was basically not encouraged or you know it was ridiculed and you got to feel a little bit stupid a little bit you know idiotic whatever it may be so maybe that kind of lack of fairness has maybe carried on with me um in my adult years as well where I'm kind of on my own but in general the one thing I hate is unfairness and I also hate inconsistency it just annoys me so much like if you're going to punish me for something also make sure you punish somebody else regardless of their reputation regardless of their class regardless of their bank balance because regardless of their family or who they're linked to everyone should be treated the same but of course we don't live in a fair world and I'm somebody who ascribes to the idea of living or navigating in the world as is as opposed to trying to mold the world to your own wants needs and desires that's how it shouldn't be but when it comes to the fashion industry it's hard to bloody swallow Kanye West gets absolutely annihilated right by every single industry like people are coming out in terms of celebrities and throwing up these really horrendous cringy very vague comments about supporting the Jewish community that don't even mention Ye's name that just say some blanket statement that's essentially at the Jewish version of the flipping black square when the whole BLM process was going on just to basically appease their corporate sponsors and to do this performative thing that they actually care when they don't all this nonsense things is happening right and then in the fashion industry Kanye gets cancelled essentially from it which they probably were looking forward to because they never liked him from the beginning from the time he debuted in Paris Fashion Week was that what 2012 2011 I forgot what that year was they've always wanted to kind of get rid of him anyway in general and essentially for me I feel like getting rid of him was essentially a dog whistle to get rid of all black and brown people because when Kanye Virgil and all those and the gang and Don C and everybody came through wearing that outfit that they were they were wearing basically going to shows and maybe buying flipping tickets to go carrying favors and not being invited and just kind of making a loud presence there and changing the overall kind of look and feel of fashion shows to the point now you go to fashion shows and you see more people like me standing outside stunting having a good time taking pictures and shit they don't like that the establishment they obviously want it to be more whitewashed they want it to be fucking loads of clothes and of emanuela alt and shit and obviously the fashion industry has changed for the better but you cancel you cancel Kanye that's fair but then on the back of but then when I think back of it something that happened a few weeks ago maybe a couple of months ago this news courtesy of Vogue Daniel Lee succeeds Ricardo Tishi at Burberry so if you're going to cancel one person for saying crazy stuff right about a community of people um and obviously because maybe Kanye stuff was recorded plenty of times on different platforms and he double tripled down but still why is it that Kanye can get cancelled but Daniel Lee cannot and I'm not for cancel culture in general I've said it from the very beginning i hate cancel culture i think if your fans are willing to back you and they're willing to keep supporting you for the thing that you do you should be able to continue doing it i don't think these platforms should be coming in and telling you you can't because essentially some of these platforms especially the social media ones are essentially a public service that's essentially what they are they're essentially they're, they're essentially like i won't say human right but they, they, it's coming close to that right having a twitter having a social media presence if you want it should be something that you every person should be basically entitled to having until it comes to a point where you don't want to have it anymore so to basically take people's voice away um from doing that because you don't like what they say is horrible especially when it's selective and in this case i feel like it is because says yeah, daniel lee succeeds to at burberry um it says yeah, daniel lee has been appointed chief creative that officer at burberry the former bottega van veneta a designer who exited italian house in november will succeed the current lead um the car on october sorry the third of october so he's already started work there and oversee all collections london fashion week autumn 2023 in february will see lee's burberry debut it says a quote this is from Burberry. Daniel is an exceptional talent with a unique understanding of today's luxury consumer and a strong record of commercial success. And his appointment reinforces the ambitions we have for Burberry, commented new CEO Jonathan Akeroid is for his first appointment in the house i'm excited about working closely with him and i'm confident he will have the impact we are aiming for in this next phase supported by our talented and experienced teams hmm 
the fact that he said closely working with him and supported made me think that they have they're going to keep a close eye on him but anyway it continues the news comes after an emotional swan song for Tishy who took the last bow at Burberry surrounded by big time names such as Naomi Campbell da, da, da. Bradford born Lee has a very different shoes to fill but demonstrated his knack for a brand new invention when he jump started Bottega from the Sleepy Heritage label into a cult favourite he's been edited to stealth favourite since the days under Phoebe Fowler Celine with more than a few waiting for his homegrown spin on Burberry watch this space so this entire article they featured they didn't mention one thing about why he's been out um, you know on the sidelines and not designing this whole time and why he left the Bottega Veneta right no mention of it whatsoever so Vogue obviously in cahoots with Burberry in terms of keeping that news stum but here's the reason and I covered it already in my podcast previously another episode so Daniel Lina Bottega Veneta breakup this is courtesy of a website called the Lexington Lions so big up them for putting this together two weeks ago the fashion industry abruptly received the news that the now ex-creative director of Bottega Veneta Daniel Lee would be parting ways with, with the Caring Own Fashion House in a statement released by both Lee and Caring Socials the split was summed up as a joint decision so clearly trying to protect this asset trying to protect this talent that they know that they can squeeze some money out of which was a fairly vague statement leaving fashion critics and commentators to speculate what could have caused a breakup the more people talked about it the more obvious it seemed that things were adding up especially when you consider if i'm not mistaken daniel lee's last collection at Bottega veneta either the last one or the last two i think the last two back to back one is at berghain where i think it was a famous um, show during covid lockdown that burner boy went to that skepta went to that virgil dj that i think it was in berkheim or i think they might have dj at ace hotel berlin i'm not too sure but basically the show was in um berkheim they had an after dinner there too in a party and all that malarkey and then the other show was in detroit and that was also during covid lockdown and all that stuff as well so they spent a lot of money doing these shows in these far-flung places so to go from that to him suddenly leaving as a joint decision bs to me daniel lee was appointed creative director of the house in 2019 meaning that his entire stay only spanned three years and less than a dozen fashion seasons in that short time period lee had made waves and breathing life into the italian house and given it the modern instagram worthy look the same year he began working at Bottega, he took home four cfda awards um, and more than any other designer had taken home in one night in the history of the event including names like alexander mcqueen lee had created a series of instant bestsellers and became synonymous with his new Bottega, such as the pouch bag and a square toe woven pumps he even set house codes like making Bottega green a staple color in recent report directly from carrying Bottega's parent company 9.3 percent of 2021 2020's revenue was attributed to the brand no small feat when you consider that on Kerrin's roster you could also find places houses like Gucci you Saint Laurent and Balenciaga but nowadays you know Balenciaga is way way ahead so it's not even close <clears throat> Almost instantly, the fashion industry could smell something was fishy in the air. The joint decision was announced on November 10th, coincidentally the same day as CFDA awards, and even more suspiciously on a night where Daniel was nominated for two awards. Um, and it's just, uh, why would a designer of that magnitude announce such an important night, both creative director and brand? Needless to say, Lee did not take any awards home that night. Critics had, uh, had also begun to point out the verbiage used in the announcement. For starters, Kerrin described Lee's work as a collaboration, possibly an attempt to distance himself from Daniel, and emphasized the decision was mutual between both parties. Some Twitter users also point out the short time between the two recent collections, Salon 2 and Salon 3, was with only six weeks in between. It's a very small amount of time to put in between two major collections and many felt that it was rushed WWE which might explain why they were so trash by the way WWE reported on reliable sources that a close brand um, who were working or speaking about Lee's less than professional work environment According to WWD, anonymous interviewees Lee's tenure at the house was littered with numerous veteran employees quitting due to being unhappy with the atmosphere of the company. So essentially, he was a tyrant and a bit of a cunt. Another source also said to WWD, at the moment when the company was healthy and the brand is performing so well, there must have been personal reasons behind this decision. The source also stated Lee was fired with immediate effect, contrary to what the original had been stated. Amidst a discussion on why Lee was leaving Bottega, the company appointed design Bottega, design director Matt Matteo Blasi as, as its newest creative director and this has been a silver lining in the entire fiasco given that Blasi is an industry veteran working under the name such as Raph Simmons and Joe Galliano and the funny thing about it because that's the thing about the fashion industry they really hyped up Daniel Lee they blew smoke up his ass they gave us the impression that he was this next iteration of fucking Lee McQueen but then when it came down to it, when Matteo Blasi's name was being flipping floated as a new creative director of Bottega Veneta everybody that you would 
want to listen to and respect their opinion on fashion was saying nah Matteo Blasi is the guy he's the actual talent he's the one behind the scenes doing this doing that doing that so all that smoke and mirrors that were given to about Daniel Lee was basically smoke and mirrors when effectively the actual real dude was Matteo Blasi to the point where this Bottega now under his stewardship has just carried on going the way this you know Bottega was when it first started with Daniel Lee nothing has really changed in terms of the quality and the level of club product that he's putting out there so clearly it shows they haven't missed a beat because the person who's designing now clearly was maybe the one that was important in the first place so that's another segment it continues evidence started to pile up pointed to the idea that the decision was made wholly by caring and wasn't a joint decision at all it was also increasingly obvious that Daniel Lee did not have a, a best reputation amongst his peers then on the evening of November the 17th, new information came to light. At roughly around 6.30pm, Luis Pizano, who hasn't returned to Twitter since, to be honest, he had this and he just basically, no, was it this or, no, it was the Rihanna stuff, innit? it? Yeah, he'd spread the Rihanna news that allegedly A$AP Rocky was cheating on Rihanna and he hasn't returned back to Twitter since. I think he's just on Instagram solely now. But it says here, Luis Pizano, fashion commentator and high fashion Twitter councilman, took to the platform to disclose information of an alleged close person to the matter. He said, Allegedly, then this comes from an incredibly close to the matter and reliable source. Daniel Lee was promptly fired by Francois Henri Pinot after he allegedly called somebody a fucking nigger in a meeting at Bottega Veneta. So this guy is going around calling people fucking niggers at Bottega Veneta, even though he created an entire brand and he basically used the marketing to kind of curry favor with the black community, had loads of black ambassadors buying the stuff, made it very covetable in terms of that community that, you know, people were going out there buying the stuff and showing off the massive green bag of the things that they were buying and stuff they got seeded. But then you also had the flipping guts and the wherewithal to call somebody a fucking nigger in a meeting to the point where now, Kering made excuses for him. I think they. I think when he put it out, Kering immediately replied to Lewis and said, "No, this is not what happened." They made excuses for him. They lied about the reason, or they didn't explain why he got fired, or why they parted companies with him. And the entire industry went quiet about what he said and what he done. And now, off the back of that, he's now got rewarded with a creative director job at Burberry. That's the thing that I think is unfair. So if you're going to punish and you're going to, you know, ice out. Kanye for saying his anti-Semitic comments why isn't somebody calling someone a fucking nigger in a meeting hold the same weight as somebody being anti-Semitic please somebody explain that and they're both equally as bad I'm not saying calling you know essentially blaming Jews for all the ills of the world and essentially ascribing them um, for everything bad that's gone in your life and making them out to be this you know evil monolith of people who are out there to flip in control the world and all this crazy conspiracy theories is not a bad thing to say of course it's a bad thing to say we all know this we all got brains we're all common sense people we're all rational people we're all grown-ups but you cannot punish one person for saying those kind of things even if they're doubling down even if they're standing next to candace owens or candace fucking owens that absolute you know heathen who's ruined flipping kanye west life with one documentary bloody hell um you can't punish one person one way and then absolutely reward somebody even though they said something so heinous as calling somebody a fucking nigger. In what circumstances, in what scenario is using that kind of language acceptable? I'll give you a hint. None. Especially if he's calling a black person a fucking nigger. This guy, this flipping, this dude calling somebody a nigger is absolutely unacceptable. I hope it was one of his friends. I hope it was like a fucking, what's his name? That country music star that was coming out of his car, going home and someone recorded him because he was being belligerent. And he, you know, and they find out through the recording that in their little friendship group, they like to call each other niggas, even though they're all white, right? And it was really strange. But maybe this is something that he says as a banter to his other white friends. It would still be unacceptable. But most likely it was to a black person that he was frustrated with in a meeting that he said the thing that he said, or maybe he said it in a PewDiePie way, where whenever he's angry and frustrated or something, he says, nigga, nigga, if he can't pat and cut something properly, nigga, when he can't get the buttons to fit the way he wants to fit, nigga, when the zip is, is annoying, nigga, when you can't figure out what colors to use nigger like that's crazy here what he ended up doing so if this guy can get away with it and get re rewarded doing you know work for fucking burberry why can't kanye be forgiven and continue having his work plastered all over vogue why does he have to have his relationship with blend sugar fucking ended and halted if people like this can survive and have a career it's completely unfair and again it's not to say i want him cancelled i just want fair i just want parity i want i want an even playing field i want one person to be treated the same way another person gets treated in my opinion especially as well when you consider his last couple 
couple of collections for Batek Veneta were fucking pants anyway. So it's not like he has a huge catalogue of stuff that you could maybe say, hey, let's make excuses for him in the same way you made excuses for John Galliano for saying what he said. And again, let's not replay that because what he said was absolutely nuts, right? But come on, man. Let's have some level of fucking fairness in the scene industry. But we don't because these people are all full of shit. That's the good thing about being a fashion fan like I am and just kind of being a consumer. You can dip in and dip out, buy your thing and keep it on arm's length. But when you get too close to it, it can really hurt your feelings. It can really hurt your feelings. 